Hey, how's it going? My name is Emerson, and today I came to the realization that these older quad-core i5 CPUs might finally be coming obsolete, unfortunately. Which is a shame, because these older i5 processors were once the go-to for budget gamers, as they could still be found readily available in some old office PCs, or just piecemealing them together online, like through sites like eBay and AliExpress. Like, I'm talking if you tried to do the latter option, you could find a cheap motherboard, RAM, and CPU combo, for like 30 to 40 bucks if you're lucky and shopping around at the right time. Add to the fact that some 4th gen Intel boards supported NVMe SSD storage, and on paper this sounded like a recipe for a cheap, solid entry level system that could feel very modern in game in most titles. But these chips are 10 years old now and they're really starting to show their age. Most of these i5s are 4 core, 4 threaded CPUs that are based on either a 22 or 32 nanometer process, depending on which one you choose for the DDR3 generation with frequencies ranging from 3 to 5 GHz for the non-K models. I tested three CPUs here to see which one was worth picking up, but they all basically perform within 10% of each other. So I'll just be showcasing the fastest one, which was the i5-4670S. This is a Haswell-based quad-core chip, meaning it has four core, four threads, and is based on a 22 nanometer process. It has a max turbo frequency of 3.4 GHz, and was launched in 2014 with an MSRP of $184. I Meaning you're getting a pretty hefty discount if you do pick one up today for around $10. But should you? Well, to find out, I've paired it with a GTX 1080 so that it wouldn't create any graphics bo graphic bottleneck and we can showcase the full performance of this little tiny i5. And jumping right into the benchmarks, in some lighter title games, these are still really solid options when paired with the right, CP or right GPU. Uh, in CSGO and Dota 2, both were tested at 1440p with high settings and both titles showed a stellar averages of 95 FPS for CSGO, or I guess Counter-Strike 2, or Call of Duty free-to-play light version, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and for Dota 2, we saw an average of 88 FPS, with both titles getting really good 1% and 0.1% load, meaning this is a really solid gaming experience uh, for such a budget chip. But that's really not pushing these little things, these little CPUs, because these are really old titles. And honestly, you can get away with playing these, these games on such a little hardware. All right, but moving on to an actually demanding game, Helldivers 2 is the newest title here and is a perfect showcase of what a CPU bottleneck looks like. With the GTX 1080 at 1080p, well, it's a dynamic resolution, so realistically it's 720p lowest settings. Uh, we saw an average of 30 FPS with 1% and 0.1% lows as uh, 16 and FPS, 15 FPS respectively. Now this was a really bad experience as the CPU was pegged at 100% basically the whole entire time and the game was just laggy in general, meaning you really couldn't play this game even if you, you, know, you think 30 FPS is a playable experience. And to showcase that it is truly a CPU bottleneck, I've actually installed the GTX 970, which theoretically should be half the performance of a GTX 1080, and even then we get the same exact results as the 1080. When the GTX 970 was installed, we saw we had an average of 32 FPS with the same 1% and 0.1% lows, and the CPU was pegged at 100%, meaning there is a clear CPU bottleneck here. And just unfortunately, this little CPU is just pushing, or it's just not enough to push these, uh, these newer titles. Call of Duty Warzone's another example here. I tested it again with both the 970 and 1080, um, just to showcase to see if there was some CPU bottlenecking, but honestly it was even more of a shit show. <laughs> with the 970 we saw an average of 55 FPS, which once again on paper sounds like it could be playable, uh, but there was just so much stuttering going on. The game was frequently missing frames and just didn't feel smooth overall. Um, paired with the GTX 1080, I couldn't even get the game, the game to load into the, into the world. I would get into the menu and I would load into a game, but it wouldn't go past that. <laughs> it would just freeze every single time uh, once you try to enter into a game. So that wasn't even a pass overall. So, you know, Warzone is completely out of the question with this guy, which is a shame. But once again, it's a, it's a dinky little $10 CPU. Now up next, I have Cyberpunk 2077. And with the latest update, or I keep on saying latest update, but with the 2.0 update, we actually saw some decent frames here. Uh, with the 970, it got an average of 41 FPS, and with the 1080, we saw a bump in performance with an average of 66 FPS. This is at 1080p, medium to low settings, uh, so we saw some really good performance here, and the fact that there was a bump in, perform in performance means that there really wasn't a CPU bottleneck 
and this game is just very well optimized i can't believe i'm saying that compared to what this game was you know three years ago yeah we didn't see a cpu bottleneck here at all and this game was definitely more graphic graphically bottlenecked this is the first win for the little i5 and actually if you know if you're just planning on playing cyberpunk yeah i definitely think about picking this one up not shabby at all questions how long it'll last yet all right for my last title here we have starfield <laughs> the cpu is well below its minimum specs uh, but i still try to run it anyway and uh, with the 970 we saw an average of 29 fps and with the 1080 we saw an average of 49 fps meaning we got you know it wasn't there wasn't a cpu bottleneck uh, but that is not the whole story <laughs> as you can see by the one percent and four percent lows the game just was extremely laggy whenever i was trying to either load into the world start a new mission or just move around in general randomly the numbers don't really show at all but the gameplay experience really wasn't that good uh, in between those things in the in between those occurrences it was technically smooth but for the most part it was not you know it was not a good experience and i wouldn't recommend pair trying to play this game with the cpu unfortunately and that's a shame because for the most part you know three out of the six titles i, sh I showed here were playable and actually a decent experience i said these core i5s kind of suck now but if you're on an extreme budget you could still get away with picking up an old office uh, pc like a dell optiplex or something throwing in like a gtx 1050 or something and you know playing some csgo playing some cyberpunk that's still a decent experience if you're looking to game on an extreme budget now if you're looking for something a little long term these cpus are definitely at the end of life um you know I wouldn't call them completely obsolete yet, but these things are definitely not where I'd put my money, unfortunately. I would definitely save up and try to spend on something a little more newer, like a DDR4 system, which are becoming extremely cheap right now. Anyways, thanks so much if you made it this far into the video. Hopefully you have a good day and thank you so much for watching. Have a good one.